All right, so welcome. My name is Robert, and I'm going to give you a tour of the Melbourne in a couple of things. First, let's start with the door, okay? Well, look, fire extinguisher. You always need to know where that is. Make sure the family knows where that is. Um, all right, so you have a screened-in door, and when you're in a campsite, there are bugs. So use this, okay? This is your screened-in door. Um, when you close this up, it tightens up, and you can shut the both together. You'll notice that when you close it, there's a handle here. So use this handle to close it. What happens with some people is they grab this handle here, which is actually the open, and it doesn't fully shut. So you want to have it fully shut. So uh, walking in, also, by the way, there's a lock mechanism here that you can lock the door. Okay, now we have the power step. This is what pops open when you open the door. Now, when I shut the door, it's on. it usually will jump in, but I have the power step off, okay? Why do I do that? Because it comes in and out when you're coming in and out of the vehicle at the campsite. I don't, I, it's kind of annoying. So what I usually do is keep that off when I'm parked. But if I'm gonna go drive, I'm gonna turn that on, and when I shut it, you notice it just, it slides out. So that's the, the power step, okay? All right, so let's go through all the functions of the RV, and I'm gonna go through them in stages here, okay? Right here, you have your lights. You'll notice you have your interior and exterior lights and your power. Power is important. Guess what? When you're traveling down the road, you're not going to be able to have the 110 running. Also, the AC will not be running when you are traveling down the road. You use the AC from the engine of the vehicle. Now, you can turn on the generator. Now, the generator will power a 110, and it will also power your AC, okay? This is your AC unit, very important. You can have the generator on and plugged it to the electrical at the same time. Just make sure you understand that. To turn on the generator, now the generator is a propane generator. There's a propane tank on the vehicle, um, and that button is right here. You hold down the start button. Okay. Now, now we're on the screen. I want to show you this real quick. This is your slide out. Okay. And you'll notice the slide out. If you look over here, Miss Rachel, my wife, she's going <laughs> to follow me here. You'll notice that this is the slide out. When you're using the slide out, make sure there is nothing here because you can damage the vehicle with it not having... Um, clearance to, to, to come in because this whole unit's going to slide all the way in. You'll notice the bed folds, okay? You, you don't want to have anything here, wires, kids' toys, nothing. Have this completely free before you do the slide out. Now, alert, pay attention when you do the slide out. Make sure someone's on the other side making sure that the slide is not going to hit anything, okay? Don't use the slide by yourself. Have someone with eyes making sure it's not going to hit anything, okay? That's the slide out, and the slide out is over here. And you're going to hold down the button until it all the way comes all the way in or all the way out. Now, there's two buttons for the slide out. One is here, and is one is in the bedroom right here, okay? That's the slide out. Now, whenever you make it to your space that you're going to park in your campsite, you organize your parking, you park. I'll show this in a later video on the proximity to the sewer, proximity to the water. Um, but once you park, the first thing you're going to do is initiate in the stabilizer, and that's going to make sure that the vehicle is stable. Because if you don't, you'll walk around and you'll feel like you're kind of in a boat. You'll get a, you know, if so, a lot of people are walking around, it's going to shake a lot. But to adjust that, it's, 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 it's very simple. 
if you're going to do an extension, you just extend, and it's going to put the floor, the two um, mechanisms on the bottom to give it some stability. You always need to make sure you uh, detract this, um, retract this when you uh, before you leave and drive away. So now we're on this screen. I, I want to show you some things here that before you drive, you walk around and look everywhere. Look up top, you look down below, the sides, the mirrors, everything. You don't want to drive with the windows open. Now the driver's side windows and the passenger side windows are fine, but the windows on the outside of the vehicle, you don't want to have those open. And that also includes windows on the roof. So you'll notice that there's windows on the side there's a window on both sides. There's a window in the back with the slide out. And then you have windows here. Always recommend that you're cooking something, you open those windows. Okay. Um, there is another bathroom window up top. Always make sure those are closed when you're traveling. Okay. Um, yeah. And there's also a window in here as well. You want to make sure you keep that window shut. A um, couple things about the bathroom. Since we're in the bathroom, let's talk about the bathroom. Um, obviously, this is what you use to flush. Okay, that'll flush it. Um, there is hot water and cold water. Um, beware when you're parking in a, in a spot that is unlevel. We have some levelers that you can use. If you happen to park in a spot in the back, there's some square pieces that you can put under the tires that will help with the level. If you're not careful, um, you could be parked where it's unlevel and you're going to have issues with the water. And so water will pull in the wrong direction. You want it going down the drain, obviously. Um, the vehicle has um, electric water and gas water. Okay, If you are not plugged in, to a um, the city water, which at a uh, at a campsite, you can turn on the gas water, and the gas water, um, the propane will will power that. But naturally, you're going to be using the electric most of the time. Now, why would you use the water pump? Well, you would use the water pump if you don't have any water pressure, and that's because you're not plugged into the city water. So, what does that mean? Real simple. If you plugged up the city water, you don't need to use the pump. Key thing to know about an RV, you should never hear random noises. If you don't know what the noise is, you should investigate. So obviously if the AC is on, you hear the AC. But if you've turned everything off and you still hear something running, a lot of times it's the water pump trying to pump water when there's nothing to pump in. So it's very common. Let's say for instance, you are plugged into the city water you don't need the water pump. That can be off, okay? And tank heaters. That is if you're in a cold environment and you don't want the pipes to freeze, okay? Now let's talk about this right here. This is all the information you need to know for battery. What's the battery for? The battery powers a refrigerator. Now the way this refrigerator is working, it's on automatic. It's naturally gonna be on battery unless you're plugged into 220, unless you have the uh, generator running. If that's not, all those things aren't working, it's gonna be the propane is what's gonna power the, uh, uh, what's gonna power the uh, refrigerator. Now, one thing to know about the refrigerator is don't overload the refrigerator. And this is key about RV lifestyle. When you drive away, this is not your car. You don't race out and pull out and, and, and gun it. You have to be super slow because everything's going to be moving. If you have too much stuff in here, this could fly open. Especially okay. on, on yeah, this especially area. Especially in the doors, yeah. I would don't put heavy stuff. I would not put a whole lot of stuff in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, the freezer, uh, same thing, but just don't overflow it, but you could fill these ice trays up with some water. Um, we usually like to travel with one third tank of fresh water 
and I got a little distracted showing you this stuff. So let's go back here. So that's the battery. That tells you your battery life, okay? Now, what's the fresh? That is your fresh water. You'll have one third tank. That's usually what I recommend you travel with. Now, what's the black tank? The black tank is anything in the toilet, okay? All that fun stuff in the toilet. What's the gray tank? The gray tank is anything in the sink and in the shower, okay? And we'll, we'll talk a little bit, but that's going to show you. Now, what's, what you're going to notice, depending on how you do your sewage, um, the gray tank fills up pretty quick. So uh, if, if you're washing dishes and you're, you're, you're just having the water run, it's going to fill that tank up. So make sure that you're real conservative when it comes to um, washing dishes. Um, always empty at two-thirds. Yeah, always empty at two-thirds. Don't get it past full. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about emptying in, in a little while. Uh, your awning is right here. And the place I'm at right now, it's not a safe place to do the awning. So when you're going to do an awning, you need to have a visual clue of where the awning is coming out. You don't want to have the awning crash into something. So you always have to be aware of your surroundings. So really look back and go, all right, is the awning at a safe place to come out? If it is, then you can pull it out. Now, key thing about the awning, key thing about being in the campsite, it rains, folks. So you, you may think you have a great little campfire, you leave all your stuff on the picnic table, you go in for the evening, and guess what? It rains and everything's soaked. It's happened to do us too many times to mention, so I trust, trust me when I say, prepare every night and put the awning back, pull up everything that you don't want to get wet and put it away. It'll save you a lot of hassle in the long run. All right, let's go back in. Oh, let me show you one other thing. Um, you're going to hear, this is the access panel for the refrigerator. Um, this is the, where the hot water uh, initiates with the propane. You won't really have to engage with any of that, but that's what these, these things are right here. This also is your um, propane tank, and this is what you hook up the, the grill with. Okay. The, this right here will show you the level of propane. Typically they fill it to three fourths. All right. And again, the propane tank powers the generator. And that's on the other side. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, a couple other things. This right here you don't travel with this like this. This is just to go upstairs. When you place this down, you want to place it with the pointing side up top, on top of here, all the way to the back. Now, right now we have um, some bedding up here. You'll notice the TV over here. We'll talk about that in a minute. But when you travel with this, this is kind of a projectile. So I like to secure it on the very back end to the, towards the front. And I usually put some stuff on, on top of it uh, so it's stored safely up there. Let's talk about the refrigerator. I'm sorry. Let's talk about the convection oven and the microwave. It's all in one. Um, this particular unit, if you're plugged into the 220 when you're at a campsite, you can run this as well as the AC. If you're using the generator, you can't use both at the same time. So it's real important to understand that. You will trip the circuit breaker. I will show you the circuit breaker on the generator later in a later video, but um, just know you can't do both at the same time. This is just like your home AC unit. You adjust it to the temperature you want, and um, it'll it'll cut on just by sliding over to the all the way to the left for cool. It cools pretty quickly. Now, if you are in 105 degree temperatures outside, it will struggle to keep this thing cool if the sun is beating down on it. I always love to get a parking spot that's under trees so you don't have that 
vent happen. Now, it's not going to be sweltering hot. It's just not going to be, you know, 65 degrees like you're used to in your home. It doesn't get that cold. It does if it's cooler outside, but not at 105. Now, we do have something wrong with this right now. This does act, this does slide out uh, pretty easily. Now, we're waiting for a part to come in so we can get it fixed, but this is our part right now. Yes, you can work out with this too as well, um, but what I usually do to secure this for traveling, I take this side just like this, and I pull this through, and I take this side, and I do this. And, and that will secure the pan. Okay. So this will secure that. Now, again, reminder, don't overfold these things, okay? A couple things I'll re recommend as well. You'll be tempted to bring dishes. Don't. You're wasting your time. Paper products work best. You don't want to waste your time washing stuff. Just eat, throw it away, have some fun. Um, now, I would recommend not bringing bags or luggage when you travel, okay, to put your stuff. Look, put your loose articles of clothing in here. You have room in here to store uh, your hangups and your dirties, but um, less is more. You'll be tempted to pack everything. You're not going to use everything. Don't do that. It's going to get really cramped in here if you have a lot of extra goodies. You'll have plenty of things to do in your next destination, but you'll notice the space that you have here. Inside this this uh, closet you also have your table okay this table goes right here in between these seats okay speaking of seats let me show you that let's put this back here so here's the table by the way okay let me close this and the, tr and the trays are in there for the recliners Oh, also, we have these trays for the recliners. I don't recommend you using these while you're traveling. It's just not a good idea. They, they'll get in the way, and they'll be kind of frustrating. Maybe at your destination, it's raining outside, and you want to eat inside, you could use these. But uh, they're all here. I don't use them very much. I usually just leave them in there. So, let's talk about the front. Um, a couple things. This right here, also, while I'm thinking about it, you can fold that up so you have some more headroom. So if there was nothing over there, that would flop over, and you can um, uh, have more headroom when you're in here. But I actually just leave this just like this all the time, and you I have plenty of room to go in back and forth. But when you settle into a location, you're going to want to use these two chairs as additional chair and seating for your living room space. So to do this, you just, on the bottom is a lever that you move to the right and you spin it. Now these chairs, I'll show you, go all the way over here. And you notice how low I am? It's a little bit uncomfortable, but we have a solution for that. There's these cushions that you put right here. And now I'm much higher in that table going right here is perfect to put a glass and eat from. Um, again, that lever is right here on the bottom. It spins to the right. But I'm going to show you something on the side because you're going to want to adjust your back. And that... It's on the other one. Other uh, side. Uh, it's on this side. And this will lean you back. The seat goes all kinds of directions, front, forward, back, but in order to spin it fully, you have to have the back all the way up before you can spin around to the front. These go up and down, by the way. All right. Now, Let's talk about your entertainment. You have the TV over here. 
and when you power on the TV, you'll be able to change your channels because it uses over-the-air digital programming. Depending on where you are, you could have a, as many as 40 channels over-the-air programming. And this is the antenna for the over-the-air programming. You can spin this around to get a better signal, depending on where you are. Now, what if you have an Xbox? What if you have something else you want to uh, bring on the, the journey? Inside this area right here is where you can put an Xbox. Now, I would recommend something that would keep it from sliding, but you have your input cable and your power cable that goes right here. Now, when you are using the TV and an Xbox, you're, uh, you can also have the audio come through the TV by using this SoundStream radio. And if you hold down the power button, you can play the audio from... Mm -hmm. How do I do it? Bluetooth. No. Okay. So this is Bluetooth if you were going to connect to your phone. But if you wanted to do um, the auxiliary input for the radio, you can go here and do AVN. And that's going to be this, the sound from the TV can play through, who, through here. So if your Xbox is plugged into the TV, it'll also put the audio through, through the auxiliary in. Okay. All right, starting the vehicle. Now, here's your key, okay? And these keys power the, uh, open the cabinets on the outside of the vehicle. Um, same thing with, this is the generator key, and this is the bike lock key. Um, obviously, this is your starting key. If you put the key here, generally it will start. Put your foot on the brake, hold down the start button, Okay, it'll start. Now, what happens if it doesn't start? You can take this piece right here and put it under here. There's a little, little place to set that key in and it will allow you to start. Okay. Um, other things that you need to know about, you're definitely going to want to use to cruise control. And this is how you turn it on and set it. Um, something that it took me a while to figure out this up button has like two kind of levels the first one and the second one if you want to just uh, increase the speed by one mile an hour while you're doing cruise control it's just one tap if you do all the way up it's like two taps it'll be an extra five yep. uh, miles an hour now uh, your mirrors when you start to drive you always want to make sure you got the mirrors right so if you change uh, who's going to be driving in the seat position, don't start driving until you get very comfortable. You got your mirrors set up just right so you can um, see around you when you travel. Uh, on top here, you got your dome lights. The manual for the vehicle is there. Uh, and you could store things as well up here. But that's pretty much all you need to know about driving it. When you drive the vehicle, you're bigger than everyone else. Be very aware of the vehicle and don't make sudden movements and try to keep it around 65 tops, 70. Um, when you're driving down the interstate, uh, be aware that people are merging in. So don't stay in the right lane. Make room for people so if they have to merge real quickly, you're out of their way. Backup camera backup camera now if I hit the um, okay yeah I got to talk about driving okay so there is as you can see this is an automatic there's no stick to take it out of park and put it in reverse or drive okay if you want to put it in park you press in that's the park if I want to go in reverse I just move up for reverse okay if I want to go back to park I hit park if I want to go to drive, push down. And now, now it's in drive. Okay? Now, this is a diesel. Understand? 
Don't assume every gas station you go to is gonna have diesel, they don't. Not all of them have diesel. What I recommend is, I usually put our destination in Google and find the closest gas stations. Have someone else call ahead and find out if they have diesel. It's not something that every gas station has. Most stations will have, one station will have diesel uh, on every exit just about but don't assume getting gas and putting gas in is on this so filling up the gas tank is on this side so you open this flap again please always only put diesel for whatever reason something wild happens and someone wasn't paying attention do not drive the vehicle. We're gonna to have to get it towed. It'll cost you a lot of money to fix a mistake uh, like this. But this is where the diesel is, okay? Alrighty, I almost forgot the stove. You need to light this just like your gas grill. You turn on the gas and you light it with the match. Um, Okay, this is a utility box, and this has some random things that need to stay in the vehicle. Such as flashlights. Headlamps. Uh, the headlamps. Um, you know, extra pieces of things that zip ties and some random things that may or may not be necessary for your, for your trip. But they are right here. And this must stay in the vehicle. Also have a book with manuals in all the manuals for the vehicle are up here and they need to stay here now um these recliners do lean back but do not have the recliner lean back while you're driving you can do that but it will bump up against and rub against this while you're traveling so i don't want to ruin uh the cabinets okay um, and there's also some storage right here. Oh, in the, um, oh, press that. And you have a power outlet here. The two, the 110 is only going to be working when you're plugged in or the generator is on. Okay. Um, so none of this will power when you're driving. Down. All right. So you've arrived at your destination and you're getting set up in your beautiful, camping experience extraordinaire all right a couple things this gray key opens all of the useful things on the side that you're going to be using to get hooked up because you got to hook up your power and you got to hook up your water and you got to hook up your sewer that's right fellas we're going to have some sewer fun here so anyway we're going to open this up you're going to notice all your wigs bang things that you're going to need and this most important thing is get power because you got to keep the family cool so you got your power here and if you'll notice at every station before I get too far ahead of myself when you're talking power if you notice here you need to have all the breakers look at the breakers you got to have all the breakers off before you, before you plug in and some places have a different plug and I have the plug here, just in case you need an adapter. But all you gotta do is you're gonna plug in, and then you're gonna plug into the RV. Now it's real important that you have everything off on the inside before you plug in. That means your AC is off and whatnot. So we're gonna screw that in. And we're going to make sure we power it on. So flip the switch. And this also, in a lot of campsites, is the reset for the Wi-Fi. So that's always important to know if you want to reset your Wi-Fi. Some of them will it'll say Wi-Fi here, some won't. Every campsite you're going to see is completely different. Now, over here, look at this. This is the fun thing. This is where the sewer goes. And we're going to do that next. Before we do that... We always are going to be careful, and I don't like to touch the sewer line without gloves on. That's one of those things that you just want to put on gloves 
because it's a sewer line, right? But this thing right here is the stand that you hold your sewage in. And all this does is prevent the sewage line from falling on the ground. And there's no like big deal if it falls on the ground, but you want to have your uh, sewage line kind of come down like a slope. So the sewage flows on down. So we're going to move this. So we got a nice little thing. And if you want to unscrew it, you just unscrew it to the left. Lefty Lucy. Right? All right. Now on the side here, this thing right here pops off. And this is your sewage cable. And this will open up. Inside here, this is your plug to the main sewage line. So you open this up and you shove this in just like this. And you take your cord here. And you're going to screw this in. Put it along the, the, the stand here. And you're going to screw this in. Just like this. Alrighty. So now... We've connected the sewage. Now, we want to connect the water to the RV. And this process usually takes you to get set up in a campsite about 10, 10 minutes or so. Now, when you screw in the water supply, you actually screw in the opposite direction. You'll, uh, you'll notice that if you do it the other way, you'll keep spinning and spinning. Ask yourself, what's wrong? Just go the other direction. Now you're gonna take your, oops. By the way, this is an outdoor water thing. So you can wash your feet off if you've been to the beach, whatever. All right, so now you can plug this up to the water supply. All right, now we're gonna turn on the water. Now we are ready to go. Now, I'll show you a couple other things. Now, I always like to keep my water supply separate from, uh, from that. And actually, I made a little boo-boo there. You notice I did not put it through the hole in the bottom. Our sewer plugged in, our water turned on. Now we're gonna make sure we set this up to the right setting. Now, right now, it's listed as three and then five. Three and five is normal. That means you are on the road and you're using everything self-contained in the unit. Now, if you're at a campsite, you wanna use the fresh water from the campsite and the sewer. So uh, what you want to do is change it to city fixtures. So that's going to be two, and that's going to be six. Now all the fresh water coming in, this is the water that the sink and the shower is going to use. So now the fun part. This is, this is the highlight of this whole video is using the sewage system and getting rid of all the funky fuck. So now we've got this connected. Now we want to empty the black tank. Now the black tank is where all of the big stuff from the toilet goes, okay? The gray tank 
is the rest of the drainage inside the RV, your sink and your shower, all that's called gray water. So you'll notice here, I have a holding tank. So I'm gonna open up the black holding tank. Can you hear that noise? That is the noise of fun coming out. Now I always open the black tank, let it do its thing and it's going over there. I don't want to show you this on video because it, is it a pretty sight, Trace? No. No, no. It, so you can see it, it, I don't know, it's somewhat satisfying, I don't know, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna open up that whole thing. Now you could keep that open and the gray tank open so all your sewage goes straight down the, the drain. The only challenge with that is if the sewage here is really smelly, it could smell up your R your RV and it not be a fun time and smelling that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. But um, I'm now I'm going to open up the gray tank and that's going to wash out the remaining stuff that is left in the system. So notice that all the water got clear doing that. So anyways, guys, that is all you got to do to set it up. Now you can turn on the air and turn on the water. You're good to go. Hey, so you need, if you're watching this, you got to load up the DEF, which stands for what? Diesel engine fluid. No, diesel exhaust fluid. All right. I had a friend of mine tell me that that is actually cowpea. I don't know if that's true, but I think you could probably Google it. But you got to open up the hood. So how do you open up the hood? You do it right here. This little thing right here, you you turn it, and you get that little clicky noise, and you walk over here, and there's a little latch right here. You lift up, and you can put this to keep this from crashing on you. Now, the diesel exhaust fluid thing is right here, and there's an indicator on the in your dash that says when this is low and I think it's around about every 1500 miles you need to um, refill it alrighty so now you gotta pour it in the DEF oh my gosh to open lefty it should be lefty loosey but it's super hard okay you just gotta put some some muscle power behind it all right, now there's a little white tab. I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna take this other tab off. Oh my gosh. Well, okay. Now you're gonna take this funnel thingy and you're gonna put it here. Now they say not to take it out of the box, so don't take this plastic thing out of the box. Just come over here. And pour in here. And you do this. Ah, uh, it's dripping. Okay. I don't think it's supposed to drip. It's not supposed to drip. Why is it leaking? Well, you didn't screw it on enough. Okay, let's try it again. Let's see if we can... You want to give me that rag? The rag? Yeah. Well, by the way, this stuff is corrosive. Okay, that's good. Good to know. Okay. How much more do we put in it? I don't know. But until it starts gurgling, I guess. Until we can see that it's full. It's still dripping. Okay, keep going, keep going. Oh my god, it's going everywhere. How much does will this thing take? Wait a second, I think we're almost full. I think our tank is almost full. Can you see how full it is? Nope. 
So if you spill any on the vehicle, it is corrosive, so I don't want to mess up the paint job, so just wipe it off. And... How big is the tank? I can't even see the tank. So I don't think you can see the tank from here. So I'm going to keep the light and see what happens. This feels like it's almost out. I know. You, it, you, you got to use a lot and this stuff isn't cheap. Oh my god, it's going everywhere on the car. Oh, wait, 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 I think, I think it's out. Okay, All right, that, you see that gurgling noise? Yep. That means we're done. So now we're going to take this, and we are going to clean the vehicle so this corrosive material does not mess up the paint job. And put our cap back on, and DEF is all done. D-E-F, not DEF. DEF. Hey guys, this is an editor's note. You see that indicator at the top? It says DEF and it has like a bar that's like sort of not full. That is the DEF indicator and if it gets low, you should definitely refuel.